Good morning. It's Dwayne Hubbard. I'm the music minister at First Methodist Church. So great to be with you for another of our Methodist moments. And uh, last week, we studied about a Gentile woman's great faith. If you remember, she was a Phoenician woman, the area right there on the Mediterranean coast near the cities of Tyre and Sidon. I bet it was just beautiful. I bet it was an absolute, absolutely beautiful place. And today we're going to study about a Samaritan woman's great con conversion, a great faith from last week, a great conver conversion this week. So if you've heard, if you studied the Bible, you've heard some preachers talk uh, about the Samaritans. Now, the Jewish people, the people from Jerusalem, did not like the Samaritans. We, we talked about the good Samaritan. Why did there have to be a story about this person that he was good? Because they didn't think they were good. And while the leaders back before Jesus, while the leaders from Jerusalem were stuck in Babylon, the Samaritans, people that were just north of Jerusalem, they kind of set up an alternate temple where they didn't have to go into Jerusalem. They intermarried with the foreigners that had come in. They took advantage of the fact that um, so much of the Jewish population had been sent far away. And then when the Jews returned, they were not happy with what the Samaritans had done. Um, this caused problems for devout Jews like Jesus and his followers because they lived in um, Galilee and between Galilee and Jerusalem was Samaria. What are they going to do if you got a, if you're up there in Caesarea, you're on the the uh, Sea of Galilee and you want and you need to go to Jerusalem for the holy days like Jesus and his followers did. What are you going to do? Are you going to travel down the Jordan River on the very edge? And skip Samaria, or are you just going to go through? Well, Jesus wasn't scared of anybody, and so he just went right through the middle of Samaria to get from Galilee to Jer Jerusalem. So on this journey, uh, Jesus had an interesting conversation with a Samaritan woman. Now, it has significance to us because we also are not Jewish, but we do worship Jesus, don't we? Um, and we worship in the way that Jesus wants us to worship, spirit and truth. It makes us and the Jews similar and makes us different from the Samaritans a different way. So we're going to be in looking at John 4, verses 21 through 42. Let's start taking a look at that with verse 21 through 24. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you and your people will worship the Father, neither on this mountain. Now, let's imagine this. Jesus is outside this little town, and he's getting water. He's getting water at a well that they call Jacob's well. Jacob, one of the fathers of the Jewish people. And he's there getting this water. And he points to this mountain where the Samaritans are worshiping. And Jesus tells her, you and your people, uh, he said, there's going to be a time when you and your people worship the Father neither there nor in Jerusalem. You and your people worship what you don't know. We, the Jews, worship what we know because salvation comes from the Jews. Here's a word I circled on my text, but, but, time is coming and it's here when true worshipers, worshipers will worship in spirit and truth. That's what I was saying. That's one of the things that makes us like the Jews, we work, worship Jesus 
in spirit and truth. The Father looks for those who worship him this way. God is spirit, and it is necessary to worship God in spirit and truth. Wow, what a great statement. You know, I sometimes think that the Jews looked down on the Samaritans not because they were ignorant, but because they were just wrong. The word we would use that is not a kind word is stupid. It's not that they looked down on the Samaritans because they didn't know. It's because they knew and did something wrong. They had. The Samaritans had Jewish blood in them. It was originally one of those parts of the promised land. But they were theologically wrong. They had altered the scriptures. Think of that. They had altered the scriptures. We need to be careful when we alter the scriptures. They worshiped in the wrong way. They worshiped in the wrong place. They believed bad stuff. They were mistaken in their beliefs. But you know, even in this, this spot, Jesus offers hope. He says, soon, in fact, now, where you worship isn't going to matter. Once you have God's spirit, you will worship in spirit and truth. And that will be all that will matter. Isn't that a comfort to us? It's, it's that we worship correctly, worship in spirit, worship in truth. Let's see what else that Jesus says. The woman said, I know that the Messiah is coming. The one who is called the Christ, when he comes, he will teach everything to us. Jesus said to her, I am I and am are capitalized. I am dash the one who speaks to you. I am. I am. You know where else we've heard I am as a title? God. When they would say, who are you? And God would answer, I am. That's God's name, the best. The woman dropped her water jug and ran into town. <laughs> and she brought the people of the town to Jesus. And they came because of her testimony. She convinced them with what she said, that they need to come out here and see this guy. You need to come and see Jesus. So they did. What happens next? Many Samaritans, this is jumping down to verse 39. Many Samaritans in that city believed in Jesus because of the woman's word when she testified. And what she said was, he told me everything I've ever done. They came and they believed because Jesus was a prophet, told her the things she had done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to stay with them. And he, and I would assume they, the Jesus followers, stayed there for two days. Many more believed because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of what you said. For we have heard for ourselves and know that this one is truly the Savior of the world. Many believed in Jesus because of her word. Isn't that comforting to us? Does that give us some power that maybe we could say something that would, would cause a person to believe in Jesus? And what did she tell him? She told him a personal story. What has Jesus done for me? What has Jesus done for you? What can you tell someone about what Jesus has done for you that will make them want to drop what they're doing and run to Jesus. They believed because she told him what he had done for her. What did she say? She said, he knew everything I'd ever done, even the worst of it. Guess what? He knows everything we've ever done, even the worst of it. So he is a prophet. 
But there's more, she said. She said, he told me that we, you and me, have hope because he is also the Messiah and he comes for us too. That's a different story, isn't it? He is also the Messiah, I am. And he said, you will worship not here or there, but because of the spirit that's in your heart. In other words, you will worship just like the Jews will worship and you will be worshiping together. I come for you as well. I'm your Messiah and their Messiah. I am the Messiah for the world. For God sent his only son to the world so that whoever believes in him, whoever, Jews, Gentiles, Samaritans, anything in between, Jesus came for us. Don't you think the Samaritans doubted that they would be included in the blessings from the Messiah? Of course they did, because the Jews treated them like they had no chance. Jesus stayed for two days. In that time, they believed, not because of what she said. They believed because Jesus was with them. He was teaching them. He was spending time with them. It's one thing to hear about something, like hear somebody say, oh, this is what Jesus did for me. It's a whole different thing to be there and hear from him, hear from Jesus himself and experience it for yourself. Now, does this make the woman's testimony less valid? Does this make the things that she said unimportant? No, it, it must have been powerful to get the entire town to empty out and see this Jewish guy who is passing through. She must have had a great story, you know, for suddenly everybody leaves and comes in, comes out, out of town, out to the well in the middle of the day. What they saw was that now she is changed and soon they're all changed. Today, we need that change as well, don't we? Today, as we go to church, some of you probably are traveling to, to church right now. As you're traveling to church today, or as you're about to turn it on and watch it on YouTube or on Facebook or on TV, let's worship today in spirit and truth and, and, and worship that risen, the risen Savior, the Son of God, the great I Am. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for this time we have together. We thank you for this, this message of the conversion of the not quite Gentile and not quite Jewish woman, that Samaritan at the well, and that powerful testimony she gave that made the whole town come out and compelled Jesus to stay. Lord, we thank you for her testimony. Lord, we, we just ask you to show us our testimony. Show us the testimony that will bring an entire town to you. What a blessing that would be. In your name we pray. Amen. See you next week for another of our Methodist Moments. Goodbye.